Hello, this is Robert Griswold from Ready-Made Resources. Uh, this will be my first attempt at a uh, video on communication. I uh, hope you bear with me if I make a few mistakes. I plan on doing more of these and having had a lot of experience with ham radio uh, is a subject that people often overlook because they fear the technical curve of it, but it is a subject that if you ignore, I think in a situation where the rule of law breaks down or we just have a general financial collapse or a catastrophe of any sort, you're going to find yourself woefully lacking in that ability. Communication allows us to talk with those in emergencies that normally we could not because maybe the cell phone system has gone down, maybe the landlines have gone down. This happened recently in uh, Tennessee with the fires we had. The cell phone service ended. It did not work because of the fires. The landlines went down, so people couldn't talk with one another. And as a result, people were worried about their loved ones. They could not talk to them. They could not find out if they were okay. Uh, and it's happened in quite a few other natural disasters, in a, natural and man-made disasters in the United States. During 9-11, uh, Pam Radio was widely used to uh, give information about those who had survived the collapse of the Twin Towers. Um, during after hurricanes, ham radio is, is used to uh, convey information. Even on an international scale, when there's an earthquake, say in Pakistan, uh, people in this country that may be from Pakistani origin don't know if their loved ones back in Pakistan are okay. And using uh, amateur radio, we can talk back and forth when other systems may be down over there. Cell phone system might not work or whatever. And we can uh, receive that information and then pass it on to authorities, which then can inform family members here that uh, their loved ones back where the natural disaster happened are okay. Uh, so again, if you ignore your ability to have communication during an emergency or during what we call Tiatawaki or grid down law, rule of law, um, I think you have a fatal flaw in your preparations. So let's take a few minutes and discuss uh, the types of communication that people do use. One would be a, a CB radio. Now, I generally do not recommend CB radios. It's uh, basically, it's what I would call a uh, redneck radio. Uh, you're gonna find a lot of people on there and there'll be a lot of trash talk on there, so a lot more vulgarity. Uh, but the one thing that CB radio does afford uh, people, if you keep one in your car, a lot of truckers still use CB radio and that it gives you the ability to listen. So if there's a roadblock or a checkpoint or a traffic stop or an accident or even radar, you can hear that on CB radio. So if you're listening and hear that on CB radio, it gives you the ability maybe to avoid what I call the vertical parking lot. That is when you have a congestion on the interstate and you're stuck in traffic for however long, hours, potentially hours, or in a breakdown of the rule of law or an EMP event, you could be stuck in that traffic a very, very long time and have to abandon and then go. So um, with that, ham radio, I mean, a CB radio is a good method of listening and gaining intelligence. The other type of communication a lot of people use and we'll be look at these. These are just standard radios that you pick up at a sporting goods store. We sell these. They're Midland radios. Now, they have some distinct disadvantages. Radio works on what we call line of sight. That means this antenna has to see another antenna uh, in order to communicate. Hills, buildings, trees, even the curvature of the earth affect this radio's ability to communicate. Uh, on the package, you might read 36 miles. Under maybe ideal circumstances, if you were on top of a mountain and you were looking down into a valley, you might be able to talk that distance with ease. But at 17 miles, you have completely gone over the curvature of the earth. And so this radio in North Dakota, which is pretty flat, would not work. You would go over the horizon and it would not work. The other uh, disadvantage of this radio, it has a fixed antenna. You cannot take this antenna off and change it. So this short antenna gives you a minimum amount of gain and the ability to receive. So again, you're going to find yourself, um, if this is the only form of communication you have, probably restricted to about a half a mile. Another disadvantage of these type radios are that everybody owns them. You're going to have lots of people trying to use these frequencies in this radio and possibly you cannot reach out because the, 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 the frequency band is congested with everybody using them. And with everybody using them, it also gives you a far greater chance of having intelligence or information that you do not want to give out, uh, go out to people. 
Um, and being that it's a short distance radio, uh, direction finding can be pretty easy with it. It also has advantage of not being able to put a big footprint out to where people can direction find you with them. But So I would recommend this radio if you had a homestead or if you were out at short distances, this radio would work fine for those conditions. Uh, I generally uh, would recommend it, uh, not recommend it for any type of Tiatawaki or rule of law or EMP event because again, of its limited distance to transmit. Don't pay attention to what the box says. If you own some of these, just go out and try and see if you can get past maybe one and a half a mile. Probably don't think you'll be able to do it. There are other types of radios, marine and aircraft and such forth, but you're pretty limited on the people that will have those. Uh, and then we come to uh, ham radio. Um, this is the one I recommend. It's the Anti-Tone Terminator. Uh, nice thing about uh, ham radio is the fact that uh, we, first of all, can change this antenna out. So I can take that antenna off and do several things. I'll show you here. I can put a larger antenna on. This antenna is about twice the length, so it will give me about twice the gain uh, than, than that radio there. This is an aftermarket antenna that easily attaches, and so with that, you then uh, increase your ability to transmit and to receive. Uh, if you really want to go nice, forgive me for moving around here, this right here, is a directional Yagi antenna. Um, nice thing about this is several things. I can hook it to my Anytone radio via this cable. If the cable is long enough and I need to transmit distance, remember I said it's line of sight, I can actually put a piece of monofilament fishing line to this with a sinker over it and throw it up over a tree limb and hoist this guy up as far as I would need to. And with line of sight, that all of a sudden gives me far, far greater distance uh, and the ability to transmit and to receive. And being a Yagi antenna, you'll notice the elements, the back ones are larger than the front ones, um, it would give me direction finding capability. So that if I'm listening to somebody and I start turning the antenna, forgive me for the orientation, uh, start turning the antenna, the stronger the signal is the direction it's being transmitted from. So I know if I have my strongest signal pointing this direction, that somebody is in that direction pointing um, or transmitting. The other thing is being a directional antenna, most of the energy will go out that direction, so I will get greater distance than an antenna such as this, which is omnidirectional, means that the energy is transmitting 360 degrees. Uh, bad thing about that is it limits the distance it'll transmit. And if I know there are people back behind me that I do not want to hear, I can point this antenna in the direction that I want those to hear me. And so all the energy will be basically going forward. It gives me greater distance and it gives me greater selectivity as far as who can listen to my signal. This is antenna is made by Elk. It's a military grade an, uh, antenna. I carry one in my car with me at Ready Made Resources. We do sell these antennas. They do, excuse me, put it down here. They do collapse down into, I don't know if you can see through the bag, uh, something that you can put into this and carry it with you. It's easy to hook to your backpack if you're bugging home. I carry this in my car with me everywhere. It fits right inside of there. And um, the elements are color coded. So you put the white element with the white element band, the yellow with the yellow, the um, black with the black, and the green with the green. So uh, this antenna right here is. Um, what I would recommend, if you're serious about communication, if you're serious about thinking you'll have to go mobile with your communication, this is what I would recommend getting. It's uh, sub $200, and I think it is well, well worth it. Um, you can, as you can see here, you can buy these cables. Uh, mine, I have is 30 feet long. It gives me the ability to hoist this up 30 feet into the air. And again, being line of sight, I get far greater distance in my ability to transmit. So if I'm uh, having to bug home, or bug out, uh, say if I was in uh, Knoxville and I had to get home because of an event with a with, you know, car didn't work or something had happened, I can communicate back home with that radio at 30 feet up in the air uh, from a far greater distance than if I was just using the antenna that came with it, thereby being able to communicate with my family and let them know that I'm okay and I'm on my way home. Um, some other benefits of ham radio. 
Uh, whereas every do radio does work on line of sight, like this, so you get that half a mile. Uh, ham radio has the ability to use what are called repeaters. A repeater is nothing more than a retransmitter that's generally up in the air quite far, sometimes it's mounted to radio towers a couple hundred feet in the air. And what a repeater does is it takes my signal that I put into it, I tie into a repeater. Uh, the repeater right here is 145 to, uh, 1, 145250 megahertz at 5 watts, and then it retransmits that signal out from a couple hundred feet in the air um, at much higher power, 500 or 1,000 watts. So that effectively gives me the, the ability to maybe transmit up to 100 miles. Uh, pretty nice. So, and the nice thing about repeaters, there's thousands of them all over the country. Uh, a lot of them, most of them are battery backed up, so if the grid goes down, you still have the ability to use that repeater for quite a while. Uh, maybe even some of them are even solar backed up, so they'd be up for quite a while. Uh, this is a repeater handbook. This lists every repeater in the United States and the frequency that that repeater uses. So you have the ability, if you're 50, 60 miles away from home uh, with ham radio, to be able to tie into a repeater and then communicate back to your family. Um, and if they know how to use the repeater in their area, they can then communicate back to you. So um, this is something I would strongly recommend. It's why I recommend ham radio. Ham radio is the only open source of communication left to the average American. The cell phone system can be taken down. Uh, the landlines can be taken down. Uh, as we said, the, the radios you buy at the sporting goods store have very limited use. But with ham radio, you still have an ability to communicate under almost any circumstance and do that effectively. So, um, I, I, again, I strongly recommend this uh, ham radio. And getting your ham radio license, it's not a very difficult thing to get. Um, my son, who was 11 years old at the time, he became the youngest ham radio operator in our county. His call sign is Kilo Mike 4 Juliet Juliet Hotel. Mine is Kilo Mike 4 India Echo Quebec. So it's not a hard thing. Uh, we actually sell a course, but you can go to a, a website called Ham Radio License Exam Online, and for $25, you can take the technician's license. Now, technician's license gives you the ability to use these UHF, VHF frequencies that are in here. This radio, by the way, will also pick up NOAA, so you can listen to weather, which is very important if you're trying to gather intel. It does standard AM, FM. It does marine and aircraft. It'll, it'll hear those frequencies, so you can monitor those. Um, again, radios are a great source for intel gathering. Let other people give away their information, talk about their supplies. I have actually heard people talking about how much food they have, what kind of guns they have, on radio, which I cannot believe people would do that, but they do. Uh, one other thing that I recommend is some pre-planning with your radios. I'll show you this. This is a spreadsheet done on Microsoft Excel, if you can see it. You can see the A, B, C, D, E, F, G across the top, and then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth down. Um, and what this is, is in between I have put all these frequencies. So if I want to switch frequencies because I think someone might be listening to me, instead of saying going to 148025, I would say go to Delta 10. Then people, anybody else who had my proprietary sheet here could go and look what Delta 10 is or Zulu 5 or Sierra 6 or whatever it is and then go to that frequency so that you're not giving away that intelligence of what frequency you're going to hop over to. Uh, very, very important. Uh, another thing I do, and those with me do, is we have calendars that we have synchronized, um, paper calendars, we go and get a paper calendar, and on every day of the week, we have what are called offset codes. So that if I said, uh, I will meet you at 1400 hours on you know, December 6th, someone would look at that and say, okay, for the, that date of December 6th, um, you know, there's an offset means it's really not December 6. It would be maybe two days plus, two days minus, a day minus, a day plus. That code would be written on there. Also with the time, it would say minus two hours, plus two hours, or whatever it is, so that uh, if, if I said the, that time and, and open frequency, the people that know me would go to that chart and look and say, well, it's really December 4th, minus two days, and it's plus two hours, so uh, 1,400 hours becomes 1,600 hours. Therefore, if anybody wants to show up at a, an event that I've mentioned, 
they will come and there'll be nobody there. Uh, another thing I uh, strongly put on that calendar are what I call approach codes. So if I got on the radio and I never and never use your real name, give everybody a handle, and let's just say for the time being that I was uh, Under Armour Black Shirt Man or whatever, I would say I'm Under Armour Man and um, calling whoever would be at the thing and I would use their, their, their handle and I would say I'm approaching and that person would then ask me for an approach code and that approach code can be anything a fish an animal whatever whatever it is for that day and I would have to say let's just say the approach code was dolphin I would have to say uh, this is uh, Under Armour Black Shirt Man uh, an approach code is dolphin and then they would know it's me because sometimes radio communication can jarble uh, your uh, ability to hear correctly. The other thing I strongly recommend, you see it around my neck, is I do not like transmitting in open air just by pushing this and talking because what comes out here, depending on how loud it is, a lot of people can hear. I would plug this radio into this microphone. Now, a lot of uh, radios come with what we call a Vox mic, a voice activated. I strongly warn against using voice activated mics because uh, you're walking, breaking a twig, a gunshot, talking, uh, wind can squelch the mic and make it start transmitting, which can affect your battery life. And also, if somebody's trying to direction find you, you're sending out a signal, which you do not want to do. So this is a throat mic. As you can see, it fits here. It has, a, it has an earbud that goes in my ear, and this plugs into the radio with, excuse me, a push to talk um, button here. I actually have to push this button to make the radio transmit. I'm not going to have any accidental transmissions as I would with a Vox mic. So um, I strongly recommend these. We sell these made by a company called Sunderly. Um, there's also a, another component here that I can plug in and hook to a rifle. So if my hand's out on the uh, foregrip of the rifle, I can push to talk from that foregrip. It breaks away real quick in case I uh, you know, dropped it or whatever, so it's not gonna damage the equipment. Um, anyhow, um, as I said, I recommend these radios. We sell them. It's called an Anytone Terminator. Uh, you can transmit UHF, VHF. Uh, if you want to transmit in a uh, HF signal, you have to go and then once you get your technician's license, get your general license. Uh, that's the license I have, and that gives me the ability to talk on HF frequencies. Those are the frequencies that you hear people talking around the world. Uh, that frequency, the low of those frequencies, they bounce off the ionosphere, and I've literally talked to people in Australia, Falkland Islands, all around the world. So uh, the nice thing about that is you don't need a license to listen to HF a short wave, uh, but you do need a license now to transmit on those frequencies, but you can listen to news from around the world if you have an HF receiver. Um, as usual, this is Robert Griswold, Ready Made Resources. Uh, my phone number at our store is 800-627-3809. I have an extensive uh, knowledge of using uh, radio equipment, so if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to give me a call. Again, 800-627-3809. I do believe that we uh, have the best pricing on radio equipment, uh, and I can uh, help you um, get your radio equipment uh, selected for you or your group of people, maybe your family. And uh, again, our website is uh, readymaderesources, all one word, readymaderesources.com. Uh, been in business 22 years. Uh, please feel free to give me a call. If you have any questions concerning ham radio, I'd be more than glad to help you out. Uh, this is uh, Robert Griswold, Ready Made Resources, hoping you enjoy this video. I do plan on producing more of these on different subjects, so follow me on my YouTube channel. And uh, again, give me a call if you have any questions. Thank you.